Welcome in for the very first podcast for six and below movie reviews. And for today's video, it's going to be about Independence Day Resurgence. Yes, Myself is Darren. And I'm Eric. And Eric. So Eric, tell us a little bit about your bad experience about this film, shall we say. So this one has got a very special place in my heart because I hate it so much. You hate it so much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Independence Day, the original, I loved it when I was a kid. It was the summer blockbuster it was one everyone went to see. it was a great one wasn't it the first I think one. I even went to see it twice yeah and that was before that I didn't earn my own money so I had to beg my mum and dad and then I got all excited when they released 20 years later they're doing a sequel oh my yeah. god I can't believe it it's not up on me I remember at the time went to the Trafford Centre a local theatre go and see it spent money on it got in there 15 minutes later terrible wasn't if it if I wasn't some cheap <laughs> myself I'd have walked out but I paid the money I was there, I was going to see it through, hoping that it was going to get better. So I've got a lot to say about this one. Yeah, talking about walking out on the cinema, I've actually done that on one film, and that was uh, Panic Room with Jodie Foster. Oh, no, I, like, seen that I, one? I like that film. Yeah, I was, I was on a date at the time, I was about 17, 18, so yeah. Brianne, you're watching, sorry. <laughs> Not bringing up a past and everything like that, but... Yeah, I was on a date at the time, about 17, Jodie Foster one, and it was awful, absolutely terrible. And that walked had that, out um, the end. that had that girl who started in Twilight, wasn't it? Like, that's who played the daughter, what's her was name? It? Yeah, yeah. Christian one, Stewart, is it? Yeah, the one who like can literally show no emotion. Yes, yeah, yeah double yeah, face. Yeah. Face, yeah. yeah. and the uh, double one, the vampire guy. But yeah, but this one, I like, as I was walking in to watch Independence Day Regurgence, <laughs> um, I like it. I actually checked IMDb before I went in, and it even had a bad score back then. It had only been out a couple of weeks. I thought, you know what, maybe it's just like you bombing it or something. Yeah, critics being a little bit harsh as yeah. well. Yeah. So, but no, as I walked out, I was like, yeah, I think it's kind of right. But yeah. For a two hour film and the budget, I mean, what, I was what in they, budget. What did they spend on this bloody film? God, right. So, the budget for this film was 165 million. It grossed worldwide 389 million, which is worldwide. good. It's really good. However, in the United States alone, it was only $103 million. So, it's a big loss if you count just I mean, the American box big, office. Big red flag probably should have been when Will Smith didn't win. Yeah. He was really good in the first. And I think they've done him quite dirty on this as well. But yeah. I'll when we on them scenes a little bit later on, I'll put up more information on like Will Smith, etc. with that one. Um this film as well is directed by Roland Emmerich. So these are the vitals for the film. Uh Emmerich has actually directed some big blockbusters in the past. So going off this film, you wouldn't think he'll have done you know, a lot of films because it's just awful. Yeah. Think. But he's actually directed the day after tomorrow. Godzilla from 1998, so the good right. one, and also The Patriot and yeah. the first Independence Day. I was going to say, didn't he do the first one? Yeah. So, so how did it go from being he... such a good film to this? I don't that's know. that's I think, the problem. I think, to be honest, I think the fact that it took 20 years to make a sequel meant that we probably stuck in right to hell. I don't think we could get a good story. Yeah, I think that's what's wrong as well. E- even, even watching this film, there's so many things that are actually in the film that you think... I- would have made a better story. Yeah, hundred percent. Like it, it, it starts off okay. It's getting the distress signal, but the first thing I thought was, I, I don't know if you know, it's in the first scene. The the alien, um, what what's she called? The the queen. The queen alien. Yeah, yeah. Of a ship, but the queen, queen hive or something wasn't so, it? Yeah. So she get, she gets this message from her, and somehow it's got Bill Pullman in it doing his speech, and it's yeah. like, well, I, I don't remember anyone talking about this. No. And it's like, how oh, did they get a copy? Yeah, how did they get a copy? No, we didn't see that. <laughs> yeah. So then, then it's got her. She gets pissed off. It's like, oh, well, you know, they, they've killed one of my, whatever yeah. they were. Because how many queens are there? Because I know in the film they talk about several queens. Yeah. And it's like, well, surely if it's a hive mind, there should only be one queen anyway. Come That's a good point, though, yeah. Because like, there must be like yeah. different segregations or something like that. No, for it. Yeah. Different hive. So uh, getting on a little bit more of the information on the film itself. Yeah, sorry. The writers is Nicholas Wright, James A. Woods, and Dean Devlin. So Nicholas has actually wrote the White House Down in 2013 oh, with right. Channing Tatum and Jamie Foxx. Don't <laughs> okay. know if you've seen that one. Yeah, that makes quite a bit of sense. Yeah, yeah you can see a little bit of the resemblance on that, can't you? Yeah. yeah. Along with a few TV shows. So it's not the right. one big film and the rest of them are TV shows, really. James Woods has mainly done acting and voice acting so, for video games. So is it James Woods as in B. James Woods? No. That's yeah. what I thought at first. Right. I was thinking, wait, is it James Woods, one from Family Guy with a high yeah. school? After it? <laughs> no, it's not him. But right. 
he's this is the only movie he's written. So he's fresh off being an actor to then think, you know, I'll just write part of the film. What was he an actor in? Do you know? Yeah, so he was um, video games mainly. Yeah. <laughs> so he's done voice acting in video games such as Far Cry 3 and 4, Deus Ex, Assassin's Creed 3. So I don't know which main characters there are or anything. Or was it like just a tradesman walking past in the distance? Yeah. So it doesn't really show too much of that. However, Dean Devlin... They have done a lot of high-profile films, such as both Independence Day films. Right. Could have worked a lot with this director as well. Yeah. Um, Godzilla, nineteen ninety-eight. Both of the Universal Soldier films, Stargate movies, as well as the TV shows for Stargate. Universal. That's Thanks a great film. That's a- I think that's a great film. I, I, I've not watched it since I was a kid, so I'd love to watch it as an adult. You know what? Let's see, right? Because this podcast, the way we run things on here, because we are six and below. So we go off the ratings on IMDb. So any film which is six or below, that could be a possible review for us. And as we are saying before, a lot of films get either review bombed or they might be harsh by the critics. So we'd watch them, think Some back to ourselves and think, terrible. is this a really good film? Is it a terrible film? Or is it just a film you can have on in the background yeah. you can watch plenty of times? Is it going to be one of them where it's a... You know, it's an afternoon killer. You got nothing else. On. Yeah, I've watched everything else on Netflix. That's it. Or is it like a must see, but yeah. the harsh critics on it? Yeah, that's the thing for it. Yeah, just yeah. loads like that. And I'm sure Universal Soldiers go be one of them. <laughs> I need to have a look at the ratings on that one though. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So the cast on this film is Liam Hensworth that plays Jake, Jeff Goldblum right. as David, Jesse T. Usher. I didn't know actually know his name was Usher. T. Usher as Dylan, uh, Bill Pullman as President Whitmore. And William Fletcher as General Adams. So like William Robbie Fletcher's Coleman. been into a lot President as well, hasn't he? Adams. Yeah, so we have a lot of a big cast and between a couple of the writers and directors, you would have thought this film would have been a lot higher rating than it would have been. Yeah. You have the so, money, yeah, they have some of the cast, you know, Al Will Smith. You have the lesser Hemsworth. Yeah, him. yeah, the cheaper one. Yeah. The one the from people. Wish. There's a lot of potential there and they kind of wasted. So shall I like... start explaining the first scenes and what happens on this film for people who haven't seen yeah, it? Yeah, so the first scenes it, it... You know, it, it opens up and you see the, the alien, what's her name, uh, Queen. Yeah. She gets this radio signal. She's not happy about it. She gets President Whitmore's, and she gets pissed off by all accounts. I would be. Yeah. You know, she, if, if <laughs> I, like, if why I, does this guy keep sending this message to me? Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's a cold call, isn't it? It is. It's, spamming, <laughs> it, it's, it's basically like someone just writing a bad review. Yeah. And what thing gets me as well, right, with this film, the next scene that comes on is President Whitmore. He's getting out of bed. He's very fragile. He can't really walk. He's struggling. A little bit of a brain fog. Yeah. But later on, <laughs> it's like he's had a recovery or something. Yeah. I mean, this guy is claiming benefits. Definitely. And there's nothing wrong with him. He walks around with this stick, but you'll see if you watch the film later on towards the end. That's what I clipped on to. Yeah. yeah. He, he walks off like, like I don't know, benefit cheat. Anyway. Yeah. So uh, a lot of nonsense happens. It um, goes into the so. next scene as well. Where it's the present day president. A yeah. bit of a weird one today, that really, isn't it? And you see a lot of technology where it's been um like combined with our technology. So the reverse engineer, the alien technology, yeah. in the hope that they can if there's ever an invasion again, they can use this technology to defeat the aliens. They also mentioned that since the aliens invaded there's been world peace. Yeah. Um which is quite laughable. Oh, here's a scene here now where you see that the, um, the president's little girl from the first one is now working yeah. for the new president. So. And you meet Dylan as well for the first time, Dylan, which Will gives Dylan. it a nice, long, smoldering look at Will Smith yeah. from the first one, his iconic picture. Yeah, like they've just took a, a scene from the first movie and stuck it on the wall. Yeah. But I think it's but, the same picture. Is from their movie poster for the original advertisement it for it. I reckon it's blocking out the bottom, if you notice. If you watch the film, you'll see that the, yeah. the bottom of the picture is just cropped out, and I'm sure it'll say Independence Independent Day. Independence Day coming yeah. soon. <laughs> but what, what I was getting at was she's working for the new president. There's a lot of nepotism in this film. There's a lot of strings that have been pulled. She's the ex-president's daughter. Yeah. You then get the Chinese bird later on who goes... To, who's um, the general's Who's the general's daughter. niece, yeah. Yeah, niece, sorry, yeah. Yeah, and then you've got... Oh, God, who else? Dylan himself, you know, he's probably only meeting the president in this first scene because, because of his dad. Because of his dad. Yeah, yeah. the hero in the first one. So, yeah. And then you, then you, now you're introduced to Jake. Oh, my God. Watch, watch, your, thoughts, watch your thoughts Liam on Jake. Liam Hemsworth? Hemsworth, yeah. 
I don't know. He's a bit of a sulky brat. He's one of these where he's um, the character is kind of, you know, the the guy who not living up to his potential. He's a bit down on his luck yeah, because, yeah. you know, they, they try to make a bit of conflict between him and Dylan, which you do get snippets of it throughout the film. Something about they tried to cut him off during training, and uh, now they don't like each other for some reason. And I think it's just a bit of a jackass know. as well, isn't it? Yeah, good way to try and get him as it's like in the in the, in this first scene you meet him. They they cut they cut the delivering this new weapon to the moon, and um, he's driving a tug. He's not happy because he's been doing a shit job, and they somehow end up fucking it up. And then he say he gets his fuck up. And it's just yeah, the whole scene got yeah. me. We get it's like it. the introduction it, to him. It's, it's like we get it. You don't like yeah. authority. You know, you you're doing this shit job. Got to be a bit of a rebel and yeah. that for it all. Yeah. And he somehow is dating the uh, the president Whitmore's daughter. What's what's her name in this? I, I forget. Um, I've got it on the nominations later on. Yeah, but I can't actually remember off the top of my head. Uh, but, I think it's Patricia. Anyway, we'll just call her little, Patricia. We'll just call her little Whitmore for now. Little so Whitmore. She's seeing little Whitmore. He's seeing little Whitmore. They're somehow engaged. Yeah, Patricia it is. Yeah, she she oh she became a pilot as well before she went to work. For the oh, movie. obviously, yeah, it yeah, had to, it had to be done there as well. Oh yeah. For yeah. It. So one thing that gets me about this, uh, as this big new weapon is crashing, and talk about timing as well, because what's going to happen in the next scene, as they've just installed this weapon, yeah. were they predicting this happening? The other thing that gets me right is you'll, you'll see, and in the next scene, they've, basically this, this weapon that they've installed, and it's falling over, someone's messed up. Liam Hemsworth saves the day by using his little... Tugboat that happens yeah, I'm to have sure as well. Arms. The weight ratio, it couldn't do it if it took six or seven of them to move it. Oh, no, because they all flew off. But I mean, oh no, he's going to use that drive, isn't it? Yeah, he's use that fusion drive. Yeah, the fusion drive, not a yeah. tug house. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh my god, but anyway, the next scene comes along, and then um, there's, there's an alien that comes, but it's not the other alien. We don't find that out till later, but anyway, the thing that winds me up with here is how. Blase they are with yes. regards to this. Basically, right, there's, a, there's a scene in there, I've got it here, where the Saturn face yep. disappears. Right? Yep. disappears. And it's the most casual conversation. It's like if I said to you, Dad's come in, look, look at this screen. Yeah. So we've lost the Saturn base, and you go, all right. Um, if you've got yeah. some milk, do you need some milk? Yeah, and, yeah. The and, then, <laughs> and then the general guy, he gets his phone, he goes, you all right, love? Time for you to go to your sisters, grab your shit. And it's like, what? Well, he doesn't even, the, the aliens aren't coming yet. He doesn't know shit. Why is he sending no. his, what's his, is his sister got a bunker? No, yeah. And another thing as well, just before that scene as well, what happened, we meet, we get introduced, don't we, oh, yeah, to right, David, David and David. the annoying French woman who's the other scientist. Yeah. What's your thoughts on her performance? She didn't need to be there. She, she, just, didn't. she really did. They were just trying to use her as a love interest for David. Yeah. Which I didn't think was even needed. Yeah. It's very shallow. The, she, she, he gets there and she turns up as in, oh, David, what are you doing here? Yeah. And then you get some like background context from one of the guys, oh, how do you know her? Oh, we met a few years back, but then it's all of a sudden like, oh, there's something between you. And I don't even know what she does in it. All I see is a go around with a camera taking photos. It's supposed to be some kind of psychologist investigating. Yeah, the psychic phenomenon because the people from the first one who, who um who had a psychic connection. So there was like President Whitmore. There was that uh, guy who played Data in um in Star Trek. What's his yeah. name in this Doctor Open? Um, God, they all have this psychic connection, and she's investigating this. But then it takes you to a scene. You're in the heart of Africa, and this is where you learn what they were actually doing when they were here last time. They were drilling down to the core, but for some reason only in Africa never mentioned but the way it's mentioned in this film is that david who's supposed to be an expert on these people yeah who has been helping create the defenses on the moon in you know in low earth orbit and all this developing all this for the defense for when they eventually do come back yeah. which they know they're going to come back and um he goes oh so they were digging that's why they were 20 years later he finds yeah, 20 years later 20, 20 years, years later, later. Uh, oh wait a minute <laughs> you see that's where i thought this story about the guys in africa the warlord fella i don't think you get a name i think you just call him the warlord yes yeah um they are having a land battle because it's the only place in the world where the alien ship actually landed and they were having a land battle kind of 
take them back. Oh, better story. That would have been a great start of it, wouldn't that it? Would have been. Literally on the ground on the boots, yeah. militia against these aliens. What the militia were using like machetes and a lot to kill yeah. them. So it was hand to hand combat. You got to kill them from it behind. Been, yeah, you got them from behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But going back to that scene you were saying earlier about when this new spaceship comes. Yeah. Right. So I've got it up on screen at the moment. Yeah. Right. Look at the ratio for how big this is next to the little Earth uh, moon yeah. base. Right. Generally. Right, the moon base, it looks like, say, this cup. No, sorry, that's the spaceship, is this cup, right? And then the moon base is like my finger tip right there, like that. that's the ratio for it. So as it comes down, it just looks like it's another planet basically coming yeah. through, sucking everything. It's coming through like a yeah. 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 As you said as well, Already Americans being Americans, a little bit trigger happy. Shoot first, ask questions later. And it's like, yeah. It just it's the, other, it's the other fact as well that of all the places on the moon or anywhere, it just happens to be pointed right in front of that new gun that they've just... Yeah, it's them. not on the other side. That, yeah. that new <laughs> weapon. Why, why are they even stopping by the moon? Yeah. It's like, what? what? Yeah. I don't, it's surely it would come to just, Earth, wouldn't it? It's just like coming away. along and going, oh, what's that? Over? Oh, hello. And it's just like, it just looks like a big head coming towards, like this, going, hey, guys, what are you doing down there? <laughs> And then they go, shoot it! Shoot it! Don't shoot it! Don't ask questions what it is, just fire at it. But the thing is, this little peeny little laser goes up and it hits it. Watch this now as the laser hits, right? Watch it just fly off like it's just been. CGI on it. It looks tiny though. So now as it's been hit and it's going towards the moon, it shrinks as it goes like towards the ground. And then this next scene, right? So this, so just for just to bring you up to speed with context, right? So they've installed this new weapon on the moon. This giant sphere has just appeared. It's already took out the Saturn base. As soon yeah. as it comes, they shoot it. It blows up and it fucks off. And then they say, should we go and have a look and see what it was? And the president yeah. goes, no, don't be fucking silly. Are you mad? That ain't going nowhere. They scan it for life signs. Oh, there's no life signs. Well, fuck it. You know what? We'll come to it later. We've got a celebration tomorrow. If I'm going yeah. to piss up, I'll see you there. Come on, we'll crack on with it tomorrow. <laughs> and the only sane one is David, <laughs> as usual in these films. And he yeah. goes, all right, then. Yeah. And then the other guy goes, I expect to see you here by 10 a.m. tomorrow, you know, for this big celebration, yeah. which just happens to be Independence Day again. Yeah, again, so Independence you know, Day. They're throwing, throwing the title of the film out as well. You know, I, was, cliche. I was thinking, you know, these, these aliens, you've, you must only like attacking during the summer. Yeah. Especially in the Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> on the same day as on well. The on the calendar. Well. They must call it it's it's like nice. set, aren't they? You, can, you can't say they don't have a bit of pizzazz about them, you know. <laughs> Trying to keep up with tradition. Yeah. They could have said. 20, like, exactly 20 on years the, on the, the same They could have said, though, like, it was like an, um, an eclipse or something happening. Oh, like a blood eclipse. Yeah. So that's why, you know, they came on this day and it happened to be the 4th of July. Just... But they didn't. And how fast did they get to Earth as well? Oh, I know. Liam Hensworth. They was in Africa straight away within... Oh, seconds. well, they've, they've got fusion drives, haven't they? Literally, seconds. I mean, but watch this on the news now, right? Where have they got this clip? When you get to the oh news, my God. Bit, the president's on there, and there's a clip in the background, and you just see the same one we've just seen, and then you must have cameras there everywhere. Yet, yet, when that giant fucking ship arrives, no one sees it. No one. That's no true. one. That's true. And it's the size of half the Earth. <laughs> no one fucking sees it coming. Oh, oh I was like, you, you can't. That's completely right. I've never noticed that one before. But like you say, it's one of them. Um, it's the same way of... as I imagine it's the same person who was sat there recording his fucking thing in the first one. Yeah. Sent it to the alien mothership. Yeah, exactly. It's it the same around. person. It gets me as well. You see it on some films where do you CCTV footage like that then? Yeah. Say, or look it back at the replay and it's the exact what? same angle and the scene that they've just shown us two minutes yeah. ago in the actual film. That's how it's it like. Is. Just happened to your camera there. No, but a little change the angle a little yeah. bit at least, not using the same one. And where we are now, the guys, uh, the warlord guy's got his blades out. Yeah. You know, he means business because he's got two of them at the back and he's got his nice little bed on. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah well, let's get forward a little bit as well. We've got President Whitmore coming so back. They are, yeah. So we're, we're... God, he gets done dirty in this bit, doesn't oh, he? No. We're at the celebration. He just turns up with his stick looking like a madman. Didn't even brush his hair. That's it. He looks, he looks at, oh God, like he dementia looks and stuff, doesn't he it? Looks old, doesn't he? Yeah, he looks like he's got dementia. It's just looks awful. Can't walk. Very, very fragile. And the other this thing is that lets what him he down. Says, yeah. The other thing that lets him down 
in this film is his bloody uh, secret service detail because he gets away from them so much. Yes. He may as well not have any. No, exactly. I mean. Right, so what we're going to do now, I'm going to play a little bit of his clip so you can hear what he says. That brings me. I came to warn you. I came to warn you. Uh-huh. Well, I think it was probably around that point in the cinema. Yeah. Where I'm thinking, I can have my money back. Yeah. <laughs> what have they done to this guy? Why have they made him fucking nuts? If it was me, president for life, man. President of the earth for life. Whitmore, man. Yeah, Whitmore on the way. All right. So now, now we come to the scene where we're on the moon again. The right. canteen scene. Yeah. yeah. Because one thing it gets me as well, right? Is just before he gets up, yeah, right, and he gets a bit of a sucker punch and stuff like. If you notice everybody behind <laughs> him, it's like a school canteen. Yeah. It's like they all know what's happening. They all stop what they're doing, go quiet, and go. All I can think of is that this Dylan fella must have been whining to everyone about must what live. happened. This incident that yeah, happened. In everybody Ukraine. knows about it, don't everybody? They? All it takes is for him to just walk in. Everyone turn him round. Everyone goes quiet. Everyone stops. He confronts him. Watch everybody now behind. Yeah, they're all watching. They're all eating the dinner and then just stop and go, boom. And everybody goes, oh, oh no. So bad actors. Like, oh, no. Oh, oh, God, no. Oh, no, Jake. And then just the, the colonel guy just happens to turn up. Yeah. It's just yeah. like people are just in the right place at the right, the time, right time. In the exactly. It's and like... to shed a little bit of context in that as well. One of the next scenes, you see him laying down on the bed and he's looking through an old video footage of the plane crash. Yes, yeah, so there must have been a camera hidden or something somewhere. <laughs> but if you look at it, it looks like an old PlayStation 1 graphics. Do you know what I thought it was when at I first? first seen it? I thought, because they're flying through a canyon, it looks very similar to the original. I mean, it looks like a game anyway, like you say. But It looks like PlayStation like 1 graphics. The original film, when they're flying through the canyons with the aliens yeah. and Will Smith's being chased by an alien. It, I thought it was footage of that at first. Yeah. And then the fact that they're flying at them speeds and he still sees him parachuting out. Yeah, it's like exactly all that for a bit of beef in training. All yeah. I could see was that he caught him up. He caught him up. Oh, boo hoo! And there's this massive beef about it. Yeah, I don't buy it. That's it. I feel like say what wound me up as well, right? Because they spent 165 million pounds on the budget and stuff. CGI on this overall is really good. They've got a lot of Star <laughs> Wars style fights, but yeah. for that cutback scene, it just looks like a PlayStation One graphics. It does. It's really disappointing. It does. It's like why not? You know, put that little bit more effort into it as well. I mean, they probably could have took actual fighter footage. Yeah, I've done something for it. Use that. Top Gun. Yeah. You know what I mean, I mean yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. Top Gun. Or, or like I said, you know, it looks like they used the use of... graphics in the first film were better. Yeah, exactly. The, the, stunt, the stunt scenes and everything were much better. And that was 20 years before, as we keep getting reminded. Yeah, we skipped over as well the bit with the mad scientist, which has woken up after 20 years. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Do you want to... Uh, so... Stay? So, in the first film, we have, what's his name, Dr. Oki, and he's played by Brett Spiner, I think. Am I saying that? Spiner. He played Data in um, The Next Gen. Yeah. So, in the first film, he gets his uh, neck squeezed yeah. and used as a, a speaking device for the aliens. And then he dies. Or so we fucking thought. Turns out, this guy's been in a coma for 20 years. But not only a coma in a hospital, no, he's in a coma... In Area 51? In Area 51. Yeah. Why did they not fucking move this guy? What well, this is one thing that got me as well, right? Again, we'll show it like a little bit later on, but it just seems everybody is in within the same room. Because when the president goes down later on, President Whitmore, he gets hospitalised. You think, right, he'll be in a medical facility yeah. somewhere. Nope, he's next door. And then this crazy guy, it's like, who put him in charge after 20 years? Because he starts walking oh, around. Well, that's it. That's my other thing. He yeah. wakes up after 20... I swear, if I went into a coma for 20 years and then walked back into my job, they'd be like, what are you doing? Yeah. You, you've been You're not meant to be here, mate. You oh. won't know any of the systems. The technology's changed. He even acknowledges yeah. that. They're using alien tech. Now, I'm not being funny, but 20 years <laughs> with alien tech being reverse engineered. Yeah, he was working on the original like one that crashed in the 40s, according to the first film. 
But oh my god, you wouldn't put him in. He just walks in like he owns a place, and half the time he's got his ass out because he's still in his fucking hospital gown. Yeah, and everyone just carries on. Everyone's just like, all right, then we'll see. Yeah, he's like, oh, get that laser, yeah. give me this. And maybe, like, okay. Maybe that was a loophole. Maybe they put him in hospital, Area 51, so he could still be paid, be on the payroll. So in case he woke up, he could just put him straight back to work. Yeah, a bit of tax evasion there as well. But... Yeah, fucking hell, <laughs> capitalism at his best. Even when you're in a coma, they're going to put you to work. Anyway, yeah. so he wakes up, he's fine. Somehow, I don't know. But yeah, but he's one of these that's hearing voices or being linked. And that's the other thing with this whole psychic link thing that they get into in these films. Is it not two-way? Surely if they're hearing all them... They should be able to hear them about all them. Yeah. That's a good way of thinking about it. So I've not thought about it that way before. Well, maybe they just don't think... Maybe we're just the ants. But anyway, we're coming to the scene now where we're a big-ass ship, bigger than the last one. And a couple of people mentioned it's bigger than the last one. No shit. And oh, that was it as well. So they've, they've gone to the um, they picked up David, yeah. Lee, Liam Hemsworth character. What's his name? Jake. Yeah, Jake, Jake has gone to pick up David, take him to the moon to review this uh, crash ship that no one else wanted to fucking see. Yeah, right? exactly. Who fucking hires these people anyway? So they go to sea just then, big fucking ship comes, and it's like, but, but what do they find? They find this little sphere. A so it's tiny come, little it comes from a massive sphere, and then inside it was this little golf ball, we'll call it, this little golf ball. And yeah. they're like, oh, I think we found something here. Yeah, and when you look at the characters later on next to it, it's probably about eight foot tall, if yeah. that, about seven foot maybe at a push. So out of that whole wreckage from a planet sized spaceship, yeah. they found an eight foot orb in about in 10 a, minutes. Yeah, in about 10 minutes. And then as the big ship's coming in and gravitational pull, they managed to pick it up and then fly off of it. Yeah, but that is the thing, right? They, they go to the, like you say, they go to this massive fucking planet sized debris field and they go, Oh, look, that looks important. It's yep. round. Yeah. It'd be like me smashing my phone down, looking through all the little pieces and going, No, oh, that one looks important. We'll take that with yeah. us. And they just happen to be fucking right. Anyway, so now, exactly. now this big ship comes. They've got all these defenses on the moon. The ship comes along. And just go, sails past like it's fucking nothing. They go, oh, use that big trillion dollar gun we've got. Let's use it. Go on, let's bash them. We got that little fella last time, yeah. the little round thing, or the big round thing, whichever it fucking was. Anyway, and then the aliens just go, in a bit. Like, fuck done. you, you little ant. Gone. Yeah. Straight away. And there we go. Here. Blow not. Trillion dollars, or whatever it was. He and then they got the satellites as well, which are orbiting Earth. Oh, I've not even mentioned. Yeah, I've not even mentioned the the space planes, the space planes, alien technology, and they still use winged aircraft that look like fighter jets. It's like they've it's just like put, an F-14 or it's something. It's like they've just put it? the F fourteen, F fifteen, taken the engines off and gone. Stick them on there and go. They'll do. <laughs> and well, I just quite like it to be fair. Why? You don't need wings in space. No, you don't. Right. That's it. And then the helicopters later on. Yeah, you helicopters still got, the same without propellers. So they've still got these helicopters that they use to transport the president, you know, the big the big fucking ones. Yeah. And then they've just took the propellers off, put a bit of blue on it and gone, there you go, that could fly. <laughs> and it's like, why? Why? The only, <laughs> the only thing that they've actually come up with themselves are the space tugs, and they just look like a little gremlin going around with arms. Yeah. You'll yeah, see it when yeah. you watch the film. It just comes over and it's like just picks up this mug and goes, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but Jesus effing Christ. But it's like as well, when, yeah, it, when, it comes, yeah, when it comes towards the Earth as well, they got all these satellites, what are meant to be like, oh. ultra tech, great the technology. Countdown. Yeah. One thing, like, they shoot themselves in the foot, though, don't they? Because, like, why did it take so long to do a countdown? Why not just go, oh, it's coming here, let's hit fire. Yeah. It's them counting down really slow, and then the mother <laughs> ship comes and just goes, oh, it what's that? Are you on a free count? I'll just knock you out your system. It does. They're going, they're going, um, going, oh shit, that little gun we put on the moon didn't work. Um, what else have we got? Um, I knew we had something else. Oh, the ones in low Earth orbit. Yeah, we'll we'll start that. Okay, yeah, let, let right, it's gone past the moon now. We've waited an hour. Let's uh, let's yeah. just, let's just, just do, do it. a so, big countdown. No, but we, yeah, but we need to add a bit of suspense, so let's do a countdown. And he goes, three, two, gone, they're gone, they're wiped <laughs> out. Right, all right, guys, 20 years you had to prepare their technology, 20 years. That's it. Straight 20, away. 20 years. And then this bit yeah, with winds the me up. Dylan's mum. No, 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 no. When the ship's coming in, yep. the gravity. We've, yep. got to, we've got to mention the gravity because this ship is apparently so fucking big that it comes over the earth and everything starts <laughs> flying off the earth because of the gravity. Have and you noticed how many boats and planes there are? Oh, I know. There's nothing else. There's no buildings or cars. 
He it's should just, sort of play in some I don't boats. Think, to, now, now I'm thinking about it, I don't even think it's a gravity. I think they're just like, I like that boat, like that plane, like that boat. Yeah, bring it up. Come on. Well, here you go. Now, as you can see on the screen. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm not being funny. That would do way more damage than just ripping shit up off the floor if it's affecting gravity that much. Yeah. You're talking plate tectonics. You're talking the, water the actual orbit of the Earth. The fact that it can do this to the Earth. Yeah. I, I, like gravity is dense. It's it's all about the denseness of the object, not just about the size of it. Now the Earth is denser than that ship. I'm telling you right now. I mean, they're after the goddamn course. But there you go. Look how many boats and but, planes they are. But what? It would done a lot more damage to the moon when it flew past that. And what's the other thing? Why? Did, oh my god! Sorry. I, I, let's just have a look. Quite passionate this. about this one, aren't you? It winds me up. And then now this look here, you know. You've got to throw in the landmark. Here's London. Let's... Yeah, there's London going no, down. No, okay. We, we didn't show London much in the, the last. The big eye's gone up. Everything's oh, been the... flashed up, but yet Tower Bridge. Oh, there's Tower Bridge. It's yeah. still there in perfect tact. Yeah, we just happen to be at Tower Bridge. Okay, we've got to throw in a landmark so we know where we are. All right, they're all they're all fine somehow. They, they you know, Liam Hemsworth piloted his ship through all, all that debris, and they're all all right. And then we've got this one here, where the mum, the mum from the first one, so um, what's, what's her name? Jasmine Hillard. Yeah. Right, so she must be the only stripper in history that actually was going through medical school because somehow yeah. she's now at the lead of a hospital, from what I can gather. And then <coughs> she dies. Not only does she die, like we were saying before about people being in the right place at the right yeah. time, her son just happens to be flying his plane round. Yeah, just goes, I wonder where like my mum could be. And it just appears at the exact same time as she <laughs> rescues some little girl, yeah. throws her up, and then... Just falls to a death, and he just sits there watching. They just happen to miss a helicopter. They're running out. It's coming in. He flies over to I think is it the White House, and they've got them helicopters. Them yeah, them helicopters without the propellers. Yeah. So he flies over to them, swings by, goes, "You're right, guys. My mum's over there. Do you mind just giving her a lift, like?" Yeah. And then they they come over with him, and they're like, "Oh yeah, yeah." They Perfect put, timing. They put the baby on. Woman gets on, and then just as she's about to get on, it's like the building collapses, and he's just there and he's playing, and he goes, "Mom." No! It's quite a bad one, isn't it, for him? No, Mum, no, no. <laughs> Is the scene done? Hey, do you remember David's dad from the first one? What's his name in that? Oh, it's... Julius. Uh, Julius, Julius Levinson. Yeah. They bring him back for some reason. I think they should have just given him a died in the sleep death, but I don't know, maybe he had a contract for the second one that's going on, and planning it back in the 90s. Yeah, that's it. Oh, look, it happens to... All the wreckage and everything from the ship coming in just happens to stop at the White House. Going back a little bit as well, what we talked about no Will Smith earlier. Yeah. Do you know the reason why he didn't actually do it? Money. Uh, probably that, yeah. But it was a, a clash of schedules between this and doing Suicide Squad. And because he had a lot of new writers what came in, like the younger generation, they watched try and like yeah. jazz it up a little bit. And that's why the script's gone the way it is. Um, originally, it was going to be him as the main story and then because he was had a bit of a schedule clash with Suicide Squad just switched it round to make his son like as the Fucking main par character you know what it will be it'll have been because they'll have been right we've got we've got the finished script we've approved it we've got the budget we need Will Smith shit Will Smith's not available but we need the whole premise is we needed to come out 20 years after the original yep. we can't do 21 years we can't do 22 we can't do 19 so but fuck it who gives a fuck I, I don't give a fuck that it came out 20 years later. You mentioned it a few times in the film. I don't care. All I cared about was we were getting a second Independence Day time. Yeah. So yeah. It had been, been rumoured for years. I think I think they even I think they even commissioned someone to write it at the start. I think I read that before when I was researching the film. Straight after the original was such a success, they gave someone a couple of million of That's It was a huge success as well, wasn't it? It was, it was massive. It was, it was like one. the summer blockbuster. Independence Day. I mean, it was parodied in so many other films. The White House being taken out with the, yeah. with the beam coming down. I mean, it was legendary. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Yeah, this section here now. Oh, my so we're God. So uh, we're at the alien prison. So they've got all these alien prisoners at Area 51. Yeah. And they're like, wait a minute. Who's got all these keys and codes? And all that? He's got to be the ex-president. Why would he know all the present know. stuff? Know. It's like if Trump was in the White House or Biden. Oh, no, by the way, I know everything that Trump used to know. Oh, by the way, Trump, Trump, I know you've not been in office for a couple of years, but we just changed the password on the Wi-Fi. Do, do, do you want it? <laughs> yeah. Do you want it? I just oh, keep you up there. While, while we got you, the new code for the aliens at Area 51. You got a pen? Yeah? yeah? Yeah. Okay, right, I'll give it to you. Fuck off. And this Patricia, right, 
every single scene that she's filming in President's oh. Daughter is awful. She can't act the toffee in this. I don't know if she's like on other films. I've not really seen many films of hers. But in this one, it is absolutely diabolical. Uh, it was a travesty as well terrible. that they never brought back the original girl who played her because I believe she's the last. The girl right. who played President Wimmore's daughter in the first I can't remember who was in the first one, which um, was like. You wrote that prison scene, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he's got the neck thing on, hasn't he? Yeah. Her acting. The it's just terrible, daughter, isn't it? The daughter's yeah. acting is terrible. It's ridiculously bad. Oh, no. Oh, no, I didn't see this coming. Oh, God, fuck off. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but then, then they have a, they're asking the questions, and it's like, well, what makes them think the aliens going to answer them? Yeah, it's a good point, actually. Yeah, it's like I'm going to go in, and I'm going to be the mouthpiece for it, and they're like, okay, all right, all right, okay. So, what's the queen called? Yeah. yeah. Why are you here? Yeah. What is it you want? And what's the symbol? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh! French woman comes up, who's who's not even French. Terrible accent and <laughs> terrible acting terrible. in it as well. Absolutely terrible. Have you seen this symbol? You know what this means? Because we know it's a circle. Any ideas? Any ideas? Exactly. You, you and the whole know? scene. Like, you guys know. The whole scene, though, is absolutely pointless because the only thing that they got out of it was the Queen's coming. Exactly. She's coming. We knew the Queen was coming. We knew the ship's already here. down. The ship's here already. Yeah. Unreal. It's like no shit. Yeah, and this is one thing that gets me in. I watch this, look. The alien just <laughs> jumps from the roof, right? <laughs> Whips its dreadlock around one of the security guards' gun. Walks out of the cage, the cell where it is, and then starts blasting the all the agents. And Why then the militia guy just comes in with a yeah, little the power slide. Slides over, yeah. grabs his sword. Call of Duty style yeah. power slide. <laughs> I like that scene though, I will admit. I like it when it comes out of his yeah. uh, suit. His suit gets damaged, the aliens, and he slimes out and he's crawling along on the floor. <laughs> Head gone. Head gone. And then I think he says to that guy, don't he? You've got to get him from behind. Yeah, you've got to get him from behind. That's think, a decent scene. Yeah. To be honest, right, that guy who's the little, like, the weeb guy. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what his name is properly, but at first, he's really, really annoying. But he starts to grow on me a little bit, you know, towards the end, with some of his phases yeah. and stuff like that are quite annoying. It, 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 uh, yeah, I'll, I'll He says to the militia guy, he goes, oh, I've got to get myself some of the katanas. Te- teach me everything you know. Yeah, yeah they're not yeah. katanas, they're machetes to start exactly, off with, yeah. which obviously we all know. And then we're coming to the next scene where oh the dog god. looks like it's high on cocaine. <laughs> oh my god. I never noticed that. Yeah, the dog is like oh. my eyes are beaming up. <laughs> it's funny. Right, but this is the other thing that missed me off, is this kid scene, right? Yeah. It's like they needed to it's almost like they missed part of the film out of Ruth's caught on the cutting room floor. That yeah. There was more to do with these kids because we They've meet cut it short, definitely. We meet them and they're just there's four kids, I think, I think there's four, driving along. They, they mention the parents dying just about. They're in all this debris, and then they come. They happen to come across Julius, yeah, uh, David's dad, yeah. who is on a boat. But as they drive past the boat, the kid says, "Look, he's waving," and you can see the arm moving. Yeah. But then when they get up to him, they say he's not out. Yeah. They so say how he's... can he be waving that? Like, it doesn't look like there's any wind or anything in there. But his arms just casually just like waving to them on his own, <laughs> which it doesn't really make any sense to be honest with you. But now we're supposed to like feel something for these kids, I'm assuming. But to be honest, there's no reason why this Julius guy was even no. in the film. It's a pointless side story, isn't it's it? Just, it would have been better, like I said earlier, if they just wrote him out and he just died in his sleep. Yeah. And, and then, then we then we cut to this next scene. We're back at Area 51 where everything seems to be taking place. It's like they're like, oh, aliens, oh, fuck it, shove it in Area 51. Everything else is there, yeah. you know. And the whole cast of the film just gathering here just, as well. Everyone's heading Every to Area 51. Every single person there's no security clearance. Anyone can arrive. The anyway. mad scientist from 20 years ago is now in charge. Yeah, so he's well. come in. He's asserted his dominance. He's shown his ass because he's still wearing his hospital gown. So he's he's literally just woken up. He's already at work, which would be my idea of absolute hell. If I was in a coma and I woke up still at fucking work 20 years later. Yeah, you know, so what's going on here? Kill me. Kill me. But, yeah. oh, I'm still driving a truck. <laughs> yeah, that would be, be like you going, uh, oh, Daz, is that you in back of truck? You woke up, have you? Right, come on, you got a shift in five minutes. Uh, Jesus, but anyway, so they put him in charge. He, they, oh, and they've got this uh, this giant circle thing that they shot down at the beginning. They managed yeah. to drag that to where else Door. but Area Fucking Fifty One. And yeah, it's just like my my god, it's it's awful, isn't it? So he he automatically place. gets back in charge after being asleep for twenty years. Yeah, this. This film has aliens in it. Not not one set, but two. 
And that's probably the most unbelievable part of it so far. Yeah. Anyway. So, so going on to the next scene as well. We start doing a little bit of a, a debrief for what's going to be happening. Yeah. So the president's daughter's by the side of her bed where her dad reunites with um, Jake. And they get a bit of, well, talking, which is a bit cheesy and stuff. And then they all go out into the uh, main locker room talking about what's going to be happening. And then they have a bit of a press conference as well. Yeah. And they decide what their plan of action is going to be. So they're going to try and fly their nuclear missile oh, no, no. planes. Sorry, cold fusion oh, missiles. Cold fusion it missiles, has to be yes. cold fusion. It can't just be nukes. It has to be cold fusion. Is, right. Because somehow the aliens have to, you managed to work out cold fusion. Yep. Yeah, that's it. That's the way it works on there. So, so they say a cheesy goodbye. So they say, well, we haven't really got a plan, but what we'll do is we'll get any pilots who can fly a plane. Sounds like the original one. Yeah. And just say, you know what? We're just going to send everyone we can over and we'll drop off some nukes. But what about the shields? Oh, we'll just send some drones in. They can disable the shields. All oh, right. Okay. No yeah. problem. Let, let's fucking do this. Is and that then, the plan? Yeah. And they had this little cheesy, like, goodbye as well. The president's daughter with Patricia and Jake. Yeah. They're saying, oh, go look at that house. I've been looking at our houses and that. The one with the driveway looks really nice. With the big alien ship, which just like left the boat in the back garden. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's destroyed now, that house. Don't worry about I that. I hate the neighborhood's a bit of a fixer upper. <laughs> but he comes with a free boat, though. Yeah, definitely is. Because if you remember, as he was flying through, they were picking up all the boats and planes and just scattering them about. <laughs> That's it. It's like a prize of bullseye, I mean, isn't it? <laughs> if there's one thing our alien overlords love, it's boats and planes. And what are, we, what, what, are we, what, what are we currently sending them now? A bunch of fucking planes. Yeah, a bunch of planes. Let's yeah. get some more Let's planes give them what them. they like. Give them what they like. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Oh. Um, and then if we, just before all this, I yeah. think uh, we find out why they're here. So we've got, we've got um, a ship in the middle of the ocean with a bunch yeah. of guys. They're treasure hunting. We find out that the ship's going over the whole of the Pacific Ocean. Yet yeah, later on, it looks like it's probably about the size of Hawaii. So I don't know how it's possibly taken over. They need to they need to sort out the sizes in this film is another thing. Yeah, it's, anyway. Yeah, the size ratio is um, really, really bad. To find out that they're here to drill, yeah. they want our molten core. They've they come across these treasure hunters and then this really cheesy scene where they've lost out on the treasure, which is supposed to be a hundred million. And then they're like the Americans are on the throne and they're like, We need you to keep an eye on this drill because we've got no one else about. Yeah. So this boat goes, all right, gives a hundred million, they go, Yeah, whatever, fucking do it. Crack on with it, lads. Yeah, I mean, who would do that? Aliens come, the world's coming in, and you're still thinking about money. Well, to be fair, I'm they are stuck funny. in the middle of the ocean. They can't sail anywhere. Well, I'm not being <laughs> funny. The aliens come, the world, half the world's destroyed. I'm pretty sure that dollar's just gone down the drain. That hundred million you just got is probably worth about ten dollars. Yeah, or ten grand at least. That's ten, it. ten grand. That is so, it. Congratulations, yeah. guys. Ask for gold, people. Yes, gold, gold. That's Jesus. the future, isn't it? That's the world it ends. Be. You ask for gold. Now skipping anyway. forward a little bit. Um, I think this is probably one of the better scenes that they've done. So this it is when, they, when, they, the when classic they... Star Wars fight battle, yeah. isn't it? It's dog fights. It was stuff. in this scene when I thought I was watching it closely and I was thinking they souped up all these ships. They they souped up all these F fifteens or whatever they are. Um, why don't they have four shields? But, but no one bothered to put shields on them. Why yeah. why did they not have shields? Yeah, they've got all the alien technology, but yet they didn't put any four shields on their own planes. Well, like, excuse me, this hasn't got a shield on it. Are you mad? Yeah, they get took out quite easy, don't they, on this they scene do. as well. They do. Even later on, the Queen has her own bloody shield. Yeah, none of yeah. these pilots do. Jesus that, oh, God, I've got some things to but say look, about that look one. Look at the comparison. Yeah, so when they're flying around this mothership, that's supposed to be this... They mentioned like, earlier on that it was the size, I think, of the Pacific Ocean, and because I think the President says which part of the Pacific, 3, Pacific Ocean. 3,000 kilometres. Yeah, and, it, and, she, and the guy goes, the guy says to her, all of it. Which yeah. part of the Pacific Ocean? All of it. They're flying around this thing, and it's probably about the size of the first one yeah. from the first film. Or probably one of the is. ones from the first film. Yeah, when you look at the close-up from the Earth, it's like this on top of the Earth, like it's having a good old hump. <laughs> but anyway, so they're flying around. They can't get... Um, I don't think they can get a shot on because of all the ships. Like you say, it is a good scene. It looks very Star Wars. A lot of lasers going on. CGI is um, really good on it, I've got to say. I've got to give yeah, props where props are due. You can see where some of their millions went. Oh yeah, it's just like 150 um, million alone, isn't it? But then they, they see the ships open when all the when all the uh, the alien ships came out. Classic so they, Star Wars. Yeah, so they say, you know what? We're taking this indoors, guys. Yeah, let's go inside. Let's go in. So they fly in, they're looking about. They're Nobody like, follows them. And then they're like, oh look, look down there! Oh, there's plants. They've got a whole ecosystem. Yeah, no shit. 
you're not going to be flying around. As far as I'm aware, these harvesters, they call them, don't yeah. have their own planet. Yeah, that's They're it. going to need to grow crops somewhere, so it's certainly going to be in the ship. But... Yeah, because they need the coal for the um, Earth's core. Yeah. It's for their, like, ship's energy, isn't it, to fly around? Do you know what I'd love? If someone could do, like, a parody of, like, just a, a, a general day in the life of a harvester where you see inside, you know, like, because look, in a minute you see, yeah, you see, like, all the lights on. It looks like they could be, like, rooms of, yeah, like you know, if the, from their point, waking like, up we're in the morning, attacked. we're getting attacked. Waking up in the morning, getting the morning coffee, like you know, with all the tentacles, you've got a couple of things yeah. all over, and they're just like they just see a plane fly past, and you're like, what's going on? Yeah, that and then the funny. president's daughter comes running in with a very poorly, poorly line oh, that yeah, she yeah, tries yeah. to act as well. She turns around, and goes, "It's a trap." It's like, wait a minute, where was she? That again. It's like oh, that was it, yeah. in the next room. Because the president well. wakes up and goes, I just heard from the Queen, it's a trap. Yeah. And they all run in. She goes, It's a trap. And they all get him out of there. And it's like, Who is this girl? Why yeah. did he listen to her? I'm not being funny. My dad was a fireman for 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. If I walked into a fire station and go, Don't go to that fire, it's a trap, they'd be like, Who the fuck are you? Yeah. Who are you? Who Why are you, are you telling us this is a trap? And then again with oh. the countdowns, they tried to do a countdown so they can like kill themselves mm. to try and save the planet. Sacrifice themselves and such. But because they do such a long countdown again, Wait, I think the aliens it's... put these little force shields on oh, the know. bombs. So when they blow up, it's all I contained mean... within this like so force the, shield. The ships are flying towards the Queen. They're like, right, well, late, earlier on they've said, oh, we can see the Queen there. She's yeah. big in the middle on the heat signatures. So you know where she is. So they're flying in, they're going towards it, and they're going, right, we've got our cold fusion bombs yeah. ready to go. Um, and then they're like, oh, no. The Queen releases some kind of pulse and it knocks everything out. It's possibly, you know, I don't know, an EMP or something. Yeah. So the planes take 3,000 years going down. Which I suppose is a good reason they had winds, because if they didn't have winds, yeah, they would have gone straight down. <laughs> no. But anyway, kind of a little so, bit. So they're gliding down, gliding down, and they're like, oh no, guys, we, we stopped working. The plane's fucked. Um, you're going to set these off and kill us. Yeah. And they're like, oh, all right then. Timer. Yeah, timer. Let's again. just not do it now. Press the button. No, no. I'll tell you what, guys. Yeah, I know, I know you've asked us to kill you in that, but we're going to give you at least 10 seconds. Yeah, just like yeah. so you can brace it. So in the meantime, the bloody, the aliens get the most deus ex, ma ex machina ever. Yeah. And then these little spinny things come down, a little active guard, and they go, oh, I know where these bombs are. Yeah. Boop, 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 yeah. boop, boop, little shields me as well, right? When, when, when the little um, things, shields, go onto the bombs, yeah. right? They're still connected to the plane. So surely the shield would go around the plane itself. So when it blows up, the plane with the pilot would, would blow up inside the shield. Well, the, the, I think they sure. didn't actually get blown up. No, because they came out. You sure? Yeah, yeah, you see them all like mm -hmm. like blow up and then they start spinning off again. And then they go to the Area 51. Oh, no, this which, is, this is, a, this is where the president one. is. So this is, yeah. uh, is it I am, I am Mountain or something? I think it's one of the Mountain ones, yeah. yeah. Whereas the current day president, you open up a door, the alien's like, hi, you okay, can I borrow some sugar? The president's <laughs> like, we're not having peace, shoot. <laughs> yeah, there will be no peace. There's, yeah. There it is, she's saying it now. There will be no peace. You're just ripping off the aliens from the first one. Come up with something original. Yeah, exactly. So they get wiped out, and then it goes into the next scene. Oh, and it's The crazy real. scientist guy is in charge again, and he's oh. walking around doing his thing. So the... the... <laughs> They decide they've still got this piece from the moon just to bring you back up the speed. So they've got this piece that they've managed to get from the moon out of all that rough, bloody wreckage. Yeah. They pick up this one piece. They drag it all the way back to Earth, take it, Area 51, standing. Scientist guy's just, just woken up. He's like, let's cut it open. Yeah. Like, all right, then. So then he's like, crack on, with it, mate. Crack on. So he gets a big, big circular saw. Doesn't work. Yeah, he's like, I that. know. I had this laser back in 1994. Yeah. That will do it. Fuck all your technology that you created all these years. Bring me my laser. And then he makes some jokes about bringing the place down last time they used it. Yeah, it's been a, a meltdown or something. Like, you're just making a joke out of him. You yeah. Don't... I, mean, I wish that have... character wasn't in it, to be honest with you. No, I know. They could have just had someone else, but... Really, really could and have done. His minion as well, the guy who was watering his plants at the beginning while he's still in a coma. What's he about? Yeah, because he just follows him around, doesn't he? It does, I yeah. think he's his boyfriend. I think so. Because if they do, when he wakes up, he says, like, uh, you've put some weight on, babe. And the oh, guy goes, yeah, that? yeah. He says, I know when so I think there's like a bit yeah. of a relationship there with them. 
that's why he's probably been looking after him for the last 20 years. So it could like explain that a little bit. But then it goes into the next scene. And General Adams has been told... If I wake up in a coma and you're watering my plants, I'd be like, what are you doing? <laughs> be like, like, mate, you put a bit of weight on him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Darren, you put a bit of weight on Yeah, so General Adams now gets sworn in as the new president. So it's now President oh, yeah, Adams yeah. from going forward. Of, of course it has to be him. It couldn't, it couldn't have been anyone else. That's it. And it's just like loads I mean, of cheesy acting again, isn't it, overall? Yeah, let, let's all waste time swearing someone. Who cares? Who cares? Yeah. I mean, half the world is destroyed. You see in London, London's gone. It's gone. London's gone. It's half the world is gone. Is gone. But no, oh, they're coming now to swear you in. I ain't got time for this. I... But so, then again, this is the guy who went, it was General Adams yeah. or President Adams now, who when the Saturn base was destroyed, didn't give two fucks. No, he was like, eh, it's all right. So Saturn's been destroyed. So the Saturn base on Saturn rings. Has my Amazon delivery been delivered yet? Yeah. <laughs> Let me just ring my wife, get to your sister and she's done. And this bit, this scene gets me oh, as well, right? This next be... scene, right? This is because he walks over, speaking to David. This is President Whitmore now. He's speaking to David. He walks over. It's a one-on-one -on -one conversation, right? And if you look behind, all the actors, they stop what they're doing and then start walking towards over it as if like a big speech is about to come well, out. He does give a half-hour speech, and I yeah, think it's supposed to kind of. Look... I just think it's total cheesy, though, the way everybody stops what they're doing. And just walks over towards him it's when like, it's just a personal conversation. It's at like the start. at the end of what, probably the second act. They've just been defeated by all the planes. The guys are still inside the ship. They've crashed. The, the cold fusion bombs haven't word, worked. I think uh, the alien ships knocked out all the satellites. It's all gone to shit. They're at the lowest of the low. And he comes yeah. and he gives a speech. And you're expecting it to be like the first film when he, you know, we will not go quietly into the night. This is our Independence Day. But instead he goes, "What are you doing, guys? You know, uh, uh, we, we need." Uh, Stay chipper, guys. Yeah. It's just... Right, we've done it once before. Mind. We'll be okay. Yeah. Oh, God. Then you got the French uh, scientist again oh. with the militia guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, and somehow uh, these militia guys have learned their language over the years. And, oh, completely, yeah. Yeah, and she's saying, oh, can you read these? Said that crazy scientist guy put on the walls. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's bad. I can't. Yeah. What does he say? I can't remember. But I remember he... Uh, Reads it, and then she goes. You know, you know when you said before that that, that circle symbol means uh, um means fear. Yeah, and it's like, oh no, actually, well I looked it up, and uh, apparently it's uh you were wrong. It's not fear. It's enemy. Yeah, Google right. translation. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it into Google, you knew. <clears throat> oh god, this this guy again with his laser. Right. Okay. This is one of the most creepiest scenes. Right. When I watched this, right, I was pretty like. Yeah, this is a little bit creepy, right? Because what he, the guy actually does, like the scientist guy, as the your <laughs> the back now I've released it and it rolls over to him and you can see it scanning the crazy scientist guy. He walks up to it, licks his lips, looks it up and down, and says, hello, gorgeous. Let's find out what secrets you are hiding. How creepy is that? That is a creepy look. Honestly, guys, watch this scene. Go back to it. The guy looks like I'm, he's going to start molesting this bloody alien orb. I'm just, it's, it's like a rape charge on the go here now. I'm just still baffled out of, like like we mentioned before, going back to that debris. Yeah. That debris field on the moon of the, you know, the small planet-sized bloody ship, and they just happen to bring that ball. I mean, how many orbs are actually on that? It's a bit. I don't know. Do you think there was more than one? It could Maybe. be like... They're saying that we're the last of our race when there was like a thousand of us came. We just wiped out 999. <laughs> Maybe. Can you come and help us against these uh, alien harvesters that we yeah. try to fight against? What, you just killed the rest of our population? <laughs> because you didn't talk about it. <laughs> oh, now we've got the guys. So we're back onto the alien. Yeah, Dylan and Jake. We're trying Dylan to and Jake. Escape. Hiding in the water. And it reminds yeah. me of a scene from Predator. There was a Schwarzenegger uh, walking around. Yeah. Try like get it's, uh, get behind it and stuff. I do like in this one though that we do see a bit more of the aliens and them walking about. Yeah, I'd like that. The, the 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 original film it kind of hinted when David and uh, Men Hillard um are going into the ship to deliver the nuke in the first one. Yeah, they see the squad below, and I think one of them says to him, "Oh, uh, they're planning an invasion." Oh, watch this as well, right? Watch this, right? Because when he says he can't move his hands. That militia guy pulls a machete out instantly. It's like he's going to lob his arms off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's like, my hands are stuck. I don't know what to do. He just pulls a machete out. He's like, wait a minute. <laughs> he's like really eager to cut that guy's arms off. Yeah. He really was. But the costumes, 
and the oh, CGI on the aliens. I think it's really well done as well. It is really on good. some of them. I would have to agree with you. So they've, they've, they've opened up this sphere on Earth um, and it's now giving off a signal. The Queen's got wind of yeah. it. And it's like, oh, well, better go and kill that. Now she <laughs> goes and gets into her suit. Yeah, her little uh, power-up suit. Mate, but I'm not being funny. Like, the size of her there and then later on when she's like... Exactly. The that size is, of a skyscraper. That is one of my little things I picked up on. So you see her get into a suit, quite snug. The size of the ship, we've seen it all already because yeah. it's detached from its the main ship itself, flies off. But here as well, um, as Dylan and Jake come out like, are trying to escape, they know how to perfectly fly these yeah, enemy, yeah. enemy spaceships that they've uh, never been in before. It's first time seeing technology. Yeah. And then they just get in well, and fly off. Well, the, the answer is that only because one of them goes in and goes, oh, the technology's not changed much. But it's like, it's bullshit because. Them aliens have like seventy tentacles. Yeah, and and they just happen to only use the two hands to fly, and they just and two for like saying, and they just they happen to fit in perfectly. I mean, you've seen the size of the aliens when they were walking past on the yeah. scene when they're in the grasses, and like you said, the predator <clears throat> scene. You see the size of them. It'd be like be like Alby, your kid, getting yeah. in into your car, yeah, and, and he's trying to perfectly. drive it, but he's not going to be able to see over the steering wheel yeah, because exactly. he's too short. He's not going to be able to reach the pedals. <laughs> it's like, come on, guys. Yeah, and then this uh, alien starts talking to him now. This is the one in the this fear. Oh, the, the, the good your, alien, the yeah, enemy the of my, my enemy. Explains that they've been fighting them for thousands of years. Yeah. And they've come here to try and get help to try and continue their fight against them. Yeah, because they're like, you know, they're apes on that planet Earth. You yeah, know, they, they, it sounds they... like a six-year-old as well. I know. It's like, oh. it's not the right voice for Do you know it. what I thought? As soon as it came on, I thought... Why have they got Siri from outer space? Yeah. It sounds like Siri on my phone. Yeah, it is actually. Yeah, Siri. Oh. And, and, the, it, and the fact that it speaks English. Yeah. And it the, does say, to be fair, that they've translated yeah, but, it and down then, to like then their primitive thing, language. And then I'm wondering, and it's like, oh, we've, this is the other thing that pisses me off with sci-fi films. It's like, oh, we've been fighting them for a thousand years. Is that a thousand of our years or your years? Or, yeah, is you know, it the same? We have the same calendar month? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like that could be like in our in our years, it could be uh, six months we've been fighting them. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's absolutely, well, obviously, it's crazy. Again, it's just like and the fact that he just the way they just picked up the language. Oh God! Here we are. They're all looking around, listening to this sphere, and they're saying it's like they've got to kill the the new sphere, which is helping them because the queen's go get all the information that she's holding from yeah. the weapons, which could kill them. So it's like... I mean, look at the CGI in the background there when the spare's behind. David's talking, the ball's behind him. Yeah. And... Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just like... I, I could do a better job. Bobbing on, really, isn't it? So they come up with an idea that they need to sacrifice one of their pilots so they can go and decoy the Queen and then sacrifice themselves by flying up inside the spaceship. Where have we heard this from before? Oh, yeah, that's it. I wonder where <laughs> this is from. Is this the exact same replica from the first script? What I love as well, right? So they've got the scene here. They've got the newly elected president. They've got yeah. David. They've got all the pilots gathered around. And they're like, we need a volunteer to kill themselves yes. for the greater good. And all the pilots are like... Yeah, I'm not doing that. It doesn't uh, sound good for me. <laughs> no, thanks. And then the president's daughter comes over and goes, I'll do it. Let's get this done. Yeah, let's get it done. But then... President Whitmore, from the first scene, he can't walk. Look he comes in perfectly fine, that's what I mean. shoulders up, walking without a limp, he, and he's perfectly... Well, if you know his, on his insane. little speech scene before, yeah. when um, when he's chatting to David, he puts his cane down, never picks the thing back up. And guess what? I'm on to you. The benefits agency again, of course. You're definitely claiming. It looks weird with a shave, though, doesn't it? He does. Oh, and he, oh yeah, and he had to shave his beard, because obviously you can't fly a plane with it. The beard. I, I think it was the, the beard what was actual making him like not less able no like he was making him like <laughs> it was yeah. just the extra weight it the was the extra weight that's why he needed the walking stick and he was struggling to get out of bed so that was shame look at him walking, walking off, off exactly walking off like so he can now fly a he's spaceship like, with no problems I'm, for, I'm sure there's like he's walking off like he's about to just go and knock someone out yeah maybe, maybe when the alien had older him they were just like you know what we'll fix that little leg while you're there you yeah know. give you some extra powers and that yeah. 
you fit enough as well for the G-Force and then fit in the plane. This bit. So Julian's now <laughs> driving the kids. They come across a school bus because they're running out of fuel. And it's like the school bus driver's done one. And yeah. there's all these kids sat outside. And he comes over and goes, Yeah, right, kids. What are you doing? Like, driver's gone. All right, then I'll be your driver. And then if somebody see it, I don't I just don't get this whole premise of why yeah. why they've got him in this film, David's dad, Julius, collecting kids. Yeah. Collecting children. And the thing is, right, the well, kids yeah. are probably more safer where they are. Exactly. Where they, he takes and them to it, he, he takes them. Where are we going to go? Let's go, kids. We'll go to Area 51. Where the planet is about to be destroyed. Oh. <laughs> wow. Why Area 51? It's, it's crazy, isn't it? It is, man. Oh, it's idiot. absolutely crazy. Sort of like, oh, the aliens have destroyed all our uh, all the technology that we nicked from them, and you know our satellites don't work and all this bollocks because for some reason they decided not to put shields on anything. Yeah, that's it. Get other, shields. Other than later on, they just happen to have shields around Area Fifty One that they steal for the plan at the end. Oh, so, they? well, they say, well, we're going to need your shield generators. Right. They're like, oh, well, that's why we'll be unprotected. So they get everyone outside with guns. Right. It'd be like. It'd be like saying, right, the the US the US military is coming with all their fighter jets. Yeah. But we want you to stand outside with an AK forty seven and just shoot at That's them. That's a spit now, isn't yeah, it? <laughs> just just in the hopes that you might hit a few. Yeah. And here's one as well, which got me. It's basically Operation Human Shield. Yeah, exactly. And this is one thing that actually got me as well, because we've seen the power of the ship before with their laser, how devastating it was on the moon base. It yeah. just wiped out completely. A little bit later on, when the ship comes, right, the mother ship bit. It starts shooting at the people what are there, and it's bare minimum damage on the buildings around. It's like someone's oh, just no. threw like hand grenade or something in the background. I mean, it's, it's the same lasers. You've seen them lasers in the first film. Yeah. When it destroys the White House, but not only the White House, the whole city. The whole it's area. A city destroyer. Yeah. And then in this one, it's supposed to be like the mother of all ships, the mother ships. It's come off. Yeah. It's, some, it's the Queen's ship coming out of the mother ship, so a smaller ship, comes over. And it's like, it's like using a BB gun. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous, yeah. isn't it? So getting into another good fight scene as well when they the release, like when they escape on the most ship. I don't know, um, I'd, I'd make up. a difference on that one. Don't you like that bit, no? No, I think it takes too long for them to get out. It's just, yeah, it's just filler now. Yeah, it is quite a lot. Especially with, um, is it Julian? Yeah, so so now, now we're... We've got Julian and we've got the kids full of uh, uh, kids on the bus. They're driving across the salt flats because for some reason everything has to take place in the salt flats in these films. Yeah. It's, um, uh, it's less than money. It must be running out of the budget. At maybe, the yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can't afford any buildings to get destroyed. Yeah. This, yeah. And then uh, then they just happen to be driving along the fl- fl- salt flats as the mothership and all its little ships come along. Not the mothership, the queen ship comes along. But look at the size it's of the so ship, though. I don't know. And then they're all they're all shooting with their their guns and you know like, I think like, it's quite good though the CGI on this bit I think it is good. It's the CGI is good, but it's just what are them guys actually? Doing? It's like like I said earlier with with the um like the U, the whole U.S. Army <laughs> Air Force are coming to you and you stood outside with a bunch of AKs trying to shoot them down. Yeah. Not only they're going to be too fast, not only do they have bloody shields these ships. But it's like, why why put the guys out there? You better bring them in. Yeah, bring them in. Bring them in and... It, save your manpower save, a little bit, yeah. yeah. You're throwing bodies away. So they've had to use an old radar station here as well, which is one of the things. So which happened to... It was, so they go into one of the hangars and they're like, oh, how, well, how are we going to track this thing coming? Because all our satellites are gone conveniently. Yeah. So they're like, oh, well, we've got this old radar van that was supposed to go to Smithsonian, but thank God they didn't pick it up. Yeah. Luckily, luckily, yeah. and then in a minute you'll see you'll see uh, Jul- Julius again driving across the salt flats. It is a uh, even though all them alien ships have just gone over, he's, he's not decided. You know what? I maybe won't head this way. It seems like there's a lot going on. Instead of just turning around, he drives on, and who does he happen to come across? Of all people, his son. Yeah, out of everybody. Like we mentioned it earlier, been. right place, right time. It's like oh. Yeah, he even turns around, doesn't it's like, who's that idiot driving the bus? Yeah, when he gets close, like, why is he an idiot driving dad? the bus? Who's that? Yeah. <laughs> of course he's got to be yeah, your dad. The kid, the kid points him out as well. Yeah. Like, there's a tall dangling man over there. Who's Dude. that? Oh, it must be my David. That's, that's my David. <laughs> there he is. Who's this blind idiot? Yes, thank you. Come on. Yes, yeah. And then, oh, it's me, Dad. Yeah? <laughs> dad with a bunch of kids. Oh, God, he's at it again. Why, why all the kids? 
Jesus. What are you doing, Dad? You're not allowed there, schools. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, my God, yeah. It's just like you say, a lot and of it is just filler as well, isn't it? They, that bit as well, right? So so they, they, they pull up to David on the school bus. Yeah. They've had the ship fly over with all the other little shits, right? So they know they're there. They know where they're heading. They spot David. He goes over. He gets off the bus and he goes, David, does it have to be the end of the world for me to see you? And he goes, Dad, I'm kind of in the middle of something. He goes, yeah, is, he goes, yeah, 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 no. And he looks over and then he's surprised that there's a, a big ship there, even though it just flew over him a minute ago. Yeah, he's just completely seen it all I out mean, the bus window. They're on the same salt flat. It's not gone far. It's still there. And he's, you know, and, he, and his son's there and he's like, Dad, I'm in, the, I'm in the middle of something. And he's like, yeah, but son, Dad, I never see you anymore. Yeah. It's not the time, Julian. Get back Definitely on your bus. Get back on time your bus. Get them kids out of here. Why are you brought kids to Area 51? Yeah. It's not a tour group. Yeah, exactly where the alien spaceship is as well. I mean, Jesus Christ. And then you got the poor acting again. you got Patricia oh. with a dad. A dad's just about to fly himself up to sacrifice himself to save the yeah. planet, sort of thing. So, and then I'm, look at look her, right? She turns out to be like bloody maverick from Top Gun now. Oh, I know. But the thing with this is, right, so like I mentioned earlier, um, the Secret Service protecting President Whitmore are just terrible. Yes. The daughter goes up to his Secret Service detail and says, promise me you won't let me dad. You know, my dad's, my dad's nuts. We all know he's nuts. We've seen him. We've seen his speeches. He's a little he, bit crazy. He volunteers to fly the plane. Why is no one saying, hold on? I know you like the famous president who saved us last time, but no, you're not flying the plane. Yes. One, you've never flown this type of plane before. Two, you like learner. 70. And I don't care if you shaved or got rid of your cane, mate. You're not doing it. Ten minutes ago, you were disabled on the stages going, eh, what if the mo I mean, you compromised. What if the queen gets in your head while you're yeah, playing? and tells you to crash it into the yeah. floor instead. So there's no way, no way on earth we're letting you anywhere near that queen's ship. Let your daughter go. Yeah. And somehow it actually goes to plan. Yeah. He actually manages well, to blow up the ship and it well, crashes the, down. The and then somehow the alien, the queen... Right, it's grown four times the height of the spaceship itself and then comes out with her own little minigun. Have you yeah, noticed that? Yeah. <laughs> She's then, actually got her own giant gun as well. Oh, man. Specially made. But then the other thing, going, going back to President Whitmore and his daughter, right? So uh, she's, um, she doesn't want him to go. The, the, she, gets, she nicks a plane because apparently anyone can nick a plane. I yeah, think it happens like three times. This plane, I need it. And they're like, oh, well, it's only like got 30% fuel. No, no, that'll, that'll do. That'll, that'll be fine. I'm just going to see me dad. Yeah, and I'm like, going to crash it in a minute anyway. Oh, yeah, I know. You're President Whitmore's daughter. You've got authority for some reason. Yes. All right, then. Yes, I will uh, I will let you onto this plane. Yeah, you can have a $15 million then, plane. Don't worry. Yeah, and then it, it takes off and it's like, no, did no one think, hold on, does she even know how to fly? Is she a pilot? Who is this yeah. one? <laughs> anyway, so she flies alongside her dad and goes, dad, dad. What are you doing? Yeah. And he goes, I've got to do this, love. And she's like, all right, then. And he's like, I'll tell you what, why don't you lead the way and lead me to me death? And she goes, yeah. Sounds like a plan. Have you noticed as well, right? The alien, when it's chasing the bus, right, it can't hit the bus for Toffee, right? Oh, he's no. doing a very slow, big yellow school bus being driven by an old man. It can't shoot it. It keeps missing all the time. As soon as a fighter jet comes flying past it, it's like, bing, oh, it's bing, like bing, <laughs> bing, straight away. Hits them with 100% accuracy. It must have gone to the Stormtrooper school of shooting, is all I can say. <laughs> yes. Because you can't but shoot you for... Yeah, but the thing is, right, is I don't get why he's going after the school bus anyway. No. You must know that the old guy's there with the kids. He's, he's trying to protect the kids. Does it still... That's what it is. Does it still think... Because they had to use this old RF, RF jammer thing to, to hide the, the signature of the ball, because that's what it's looking for. And that was what was on the president's ship. Yeah. Because that was supposed Maybe to be the decoy. Like, Oof. Yeah. That's straight away. It's a plane that no problems. Can't it's hit just a like, bus. Oh, there's a bus. Boom. Oh, missed. Boom. Missed. Boom. Why are you even going for it? You've got planes. There's no reason, around. is there? There's no reason for it to be you're chasing being, the school bus. You're being shot though. at. You're being, it's like, right. So it's, it's like if I went to, and I don't know, and. Ant's nest. Yeah. And I'm trying to kill the ant, <laughs> and then some wasps come along and start stinging me. It's like, I'm not asked about you. I just want this ant here. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Why? It's not... Oh, just... And then this is really poor acting again by Patricia. I know oh. I keep, like, hating on her a little bit, but she's a piss-poor actress, especially in this. 
Um, and then she knocks her shield down, so she has to speed one, drives past it, gives it a little bit of a side dive, smirk, yeah. the eye to eye each other, just like a big F you, shields down, great job, whip. She starts crashing, unfortunately she does survive. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately. And the else goes down. And then it's like the alien, the queen, looks at her going down, and again, for no reason, she doesn't have to go after the pilot. It's yeah. parachuted out, but starts charging at her. I know she's like instead of like the whole so area fifty one. She's the yeah, the queen's got this vest on and she's just shot it. It got through the shield somehow because apparently you shoot it enough and the shields just go down. Makes no sense. And then it gets she gets a little uh, little mark on her vest and yeah. she goes, "You know what? Sod that school bus. You're next, lovey." Yeah, and talk that, about timing as well. They've come from mate, like their right spaceship. place, right time again. Yeah. Again, they've just turned up now. Dylan, so the guys, the Dylan, Jake, and the yeah. guys that were um, that were on the ship who robbed the alien ships somehow managed to get off there. Again, don't know how they're flying these things, but just arrive in the nick of time, just as it's about to put its knuckles down on his girlfriend, the president's ex president's daughter, and they just happen to show up and start shooting. <laughs> it's just like, and then this other scene in a moment winds me up because they come along. Is it the tornado ship. one? So they come along in their ship and they're being yeah. shot at. And then all of a sudden, <clears throat> it just goes, you know what? I can control you guys. How did they even get out of there in the first place if they have remote control yeah. over the ship? And why is it taking so long? The Queen being shot at now. Yeah. The Queen say, oh, wait a minute. I can actually fly these ships. What are shooting me? I know. <laughs> and that's the thing. It's like, because it even acknowledges in the first one when they get overridden, when yeah. they go into the ship, when they go to deliver the nuke. Now, these ones here... You know, if they come along, how they even got out of the ship in the first place, as soon as they nicked them, surely they could have just gone, hold on, override. Yeah, override. Get your ass back here now. Yeah. Not get out there, go over to the Queen and kill everyone. No, that's I it. Mean, I mean, the aliens, I'm not being funny, guys, if you're out there, air traffic control, maybe? <laughs> just put it out there, you know? Or yeah, unauthorised take off. Drive. <laughs> yeah. That's it, because they just fly off, don't they? Oh, God. Oh, well, now, now the aliens, so the aliens that are in the prison have somehow managed to escape. Um, They've been in there for years, never managed to escape. They're all locked in their own cubicles, but no, all of a sudden. Oh, well, no. They, yeah, they how man did they get out, actually? I don't know. That's the thing. Yeah. They just, two, two guys come along, don't they? Two, two, two extras or whatever come along and they yeah, say, they get killed off yeah, we, away, we, we, we got a problem in the prison. And it's just like, how did they even get out? That's I it. mean, and then you've got, then you've got them all shooting at them, and like all of a sudden, it's about going like, to hyperdrive now, aren't they? As well, just stuck, yeah, so, in the hive mind, aren't they? Yeah, so so the, the all the little ships that came along with the queen, because the queen's now got a shield, she's got them circling round her, basically defending her the whole time. And but it's because, nothing shooting at them though, if you notice. Yeah, because they're in the alien ships, uh, Dylan and um, and Jake, they're both in an alien ship. Um, it gets taken over, so they're they're caught in this whirlwind yeah. of uh, ships, and then to get out of it, they decide, like they did in the beginning of the film, to put the hyperdrive on, um, just to get out of it. But then I don't, they don't actually do anything here, do they? No, they do, do, um, they do just... a free fall down. This is where they kill the queen. Oh, is it? Yeah, because as they do a free fall, it's oh, just perfectly it above be, them. You know, as they fall down, yeah. you know what I mean. And then they start I shooting mean, the queen. Queen runs off, and then the they thing. shoot the queen in the ass, and that's how she dies. Well, she's got this high thing going round, yeah, but yet yeah, hasn't covered the top. Even no. though she's just literally watched these ships fly up out of the middle of the the high. Yeah, but look yeah, how she much she's shrunk again, though. I know she's gone dead small again compared to what she was when she was chasing the bus. Now they start shooting her in the ass, and that's how oh, they kill yeah. her. Oh yeah, because he say shoot for the ass is the weak point. Yeah. How did they know? Oh, They've no. never seen the Queen before. How do they know where the weak point is? Yeah. And I thought as well... So she bursts out of her suit now. Yeah, I thought her. they had to kill her out of the suit as well, but she dies as soon as like, the oxygen in the air gets to her. They don't actually hit her out after she's you know, got out of the suit. Yeah. She just collapses and dies. So I don't know if it's something to do with like, the oxygen or something. They yeah. can't breathe in it. And then the Queen just happens to die right next to the school bus full of kids. Here it comes stumbling. And then the old playbook of reversing a straight line instead of moving to one side. Yeah, just moving to the left or the right. Yeah, the Prometheus school of moving out the way of things. It's just, oh my. 
Yeah, so he then sticks into reverse. The aliens, the, the queen's coming down. Just misses the shit. Just misses the school bus. Hooray. The queen's dead. And then, what do you know? All the ships just start falling from the sky. And then the mothership is hugging the earth. Decides yeah. to just suddenly sod off home. Yeah, that's it. And, um, I, and that is pretty much the, the rest of the film, really, isn't it? It's just the a film. Bit and then, of, um, we, I don't think we mentioned it, but as well, to, 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 to add a bit of suspense to it as well, there's about three timers going off at the same time. So you've got a countdown to when the Queen's going to arrive yeah, to, grab the, them the, uh, yeah, yeah. to grab the orb. And then you've got the countdown of the uh, the mine in the, before they reach the core of the earth, which, yeah. yeah um, which that's got to have done some damage in itself. I mean, you can't just mine yeah, yeah, it's the corner. Yeah, it's got to be unstable, hasn't it? Yeah. It's, that's got to be a deep tunnel there, isn't it? Well, that's it. Everyone's acting like it's a, it's the best thing in the world. And, and they all come out at the same time from there. I mean, the one, don't they? And yeah, and then... The whole cast are all then, together when the, sh- when the big ship leaves at the end, the, the Earth is pretty much untouched. Yeah. Looking at it. And it doesn't cause any damage when it's leaving. No. I mean... Exactly. I mean, it arrived in a whirlwind. It's like it's like your mate who arrives drunk in yeah. the evening, crashes everything, but then he's quite respectful the next morning and even wipes his feet on the way out. <laughs> Cleaned up everywhere. Cleaned up wash you on yeah. that for you. Sorry, guys. Queen's dead. We're going to leave now. Sorry about that. Hey. Yeah. So, yeah, at the end of it, it's just um, oh. Jake and Patricia cuddle. Everything's all done. And then they're, they're trying to leave it a bit of suspense that there might be a third one. Um, with them no. going to take the battle to them. Yeah, so the, the so the orb goes, um, Brett Spiner's character, the doc, the mad doctor, He's uh, he comes along and he goes, I've had a look at this guy's archives, this spear. He's got a lot of guns in here. You know what? We can take it to them. I'm talking warp drive and all stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that's it. And I'm like, that, so see you in 20 years for the next one. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It'll probably be straight to bloody... Uh, right. Straight to DVD. Credits are all there. Film is... Complete and oh, everything is God. all gone. Hannah, hooray, indeed. So, so just just to recap, the, yeah. the, the, the one thing I will say about this film is when I watched it originally in the cinema, I walked out of there thinking it was possibly the worst piece of shit I've ever seen yeah. in my entire life. I can see where you're going from as well. But then I watched it again today, to obviously for doing this uh, this podcast, and it wasn't as bad as I originally had in my head. You think you're being a bit harsh? I think I was being a bit it. harsh. But like I say, I think it was a hype at the time, the fact that, you know, you know, um, don't get me wrong, I hate this film. It's it's terrible. It, 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 they had 20 years. It, yeah. it, basically, the, the film is the same premise of the writers. You had 20 years to prepare for this, and you messed it up. Yeah, that's what it came out of. And then they, they said, well, we've done it, so we may as well just base the film on that theme, that we had 20 years to prepare for the yeah. aliens coming back. And we severely messed it up. I mean, yeah, it was it was just a shambles. But I'd say I'd say overall, the the, the f- filming wasn't too bad. The pacing wasn't too bad. I've 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 seen worse films with worse pacing. Um, the acting was sketchy in parts. There was a couple of actors who let it down the, personally. The, the younger actors just I don't know. There was they, they were just expecting us with some of the characters to to, to feel something about them. But then there was no backstory. There was yeah, there wasn't there. anything there, like, was there. It's like the kids, uh, uh, you know, kids, kids. But I, I don't give a fuck about who are they. That wound me up. That that should have just been wiped. Yeah, Julia shouldn't have been in the film. There was no need for. Yeah, the whole sub story should have been wiped off. The didn't kids, really need that. I think really they should have. They should have either gone with the story about the African um, warlord and and the, the that would have been good. Yeah, the, a little the, bit of background. Kind of the clean up afterwards, or more. I like. I like the. I like David's character, although he's changed a lot since the first one, but more of him, maybe. He was good in the first one. Okay. He, he would have been so good. I'm going to stop you there, right? Because I don't want to give too much away, too much spoilers for our next section. So, for our next section of the podcast, we're going to give away some awards. So, we're going to give off the uh, best actor, the worst actor, three best bits of the film on our personal opinions, and the three worst bits of the film as well. And what actor would make the film better by starring in it? So, well, that's an easy one. Yeah, who is the best actor in your opinion? You know, it's like it's like trying to choose which is the best nugget of poo in a pile of shit. <laughs> um, I don't know. You know, uh, I like the David character mainly because you know he was in the first film. He, yeah. he saved the day in the first film, and um, acting wise, Jeff Goldblum. 
he, he could be in anything really i think yeah. I'd, I'd have to say i'd have to say jeff goldblum to be honest my personal opinion i knew his backstory as well yeah, so you know a little bit so, about him don't so you? i i have a i have an emotional almost connection to him from yeah. the first film so i didn't really feel that way about any of the others the other characters have changed too much yeah true true yeah. but for myself i also thought jesse t usher done quite good as dylan, dylan. yeah no. I quite I quite thought he sold the role quite good. I think he'd done all right as Steve from what he's given. Do you well, know what I mean? I don't know. My criticism on him, I, I just felt like he was trying to fill Will Smith's place in the film. Yeah, I can see that. Because he had the same name, Hillard. He was a fighter pilot and he saved the day. So he's basically trying to be his dad. Yeah. It's almost 100%. like he couldn't get Will Smith, so they got him in. So he's trying to be Will Smith. But I don't know. I just, I just don't feel he pulled it off. He could have yeah, been right there. To us, yeah. Now we're going over the best actor. It's time for the worst actor award. I'm going to take you to the bank, Senator Trent. <laughs> to the blood bank. The Steven Seagal award. The Steven Seagal award. It's got to be the Steven Seagal award because he is awful in oh, every single God. role that he plays. We need to do one of his in the future. We've got to do a couple Jesus. of his, and I'm sure. On IMDb, there's going to be a hell of a lot of Steam Seagals below six on the rating. There's got to be so many. Hard there to kill, be. is it? There will be. <laughs> Jesus. Well, I, I, think I, know, I think I know who yours is going to be. because you, you right, It's got to be Patricia. The President's Daughter. Oh, my God. What a piss-poor performance all the way through. But in a close second, I've actually got a bit of a recognition for the French doctor as well, the scientist guy. David's girlfriend, she was just awful throughout the whole thing as well. Didn't really need to there be was, in it. There was no need to be in. I mean, they have a kiss at the end. And I think that's literally the only reason she was in the film. Yeah. I mean, I can't remember who played Trying the, the love interest. Film, but it would have just been better if he didn't need it. David didn't need a love interest. He had one in the first film, but he was 20 years younger. And, you know, he, that was a good story about him and his wife. He, you know, he gave him the connection to the White House in the first film and so on. But for this, it was, there was no reason to be in it. She added nothing to the film. Yeah. But I wouldn't say she was the worst. To me, the worst would be, I, I can't, I don't know what his name is in the film or who plays him, but his, uh, Jake's mate, he flies in the planes with him. I think he was bad, yeah. I can't stand him. He's just... I don't he, think he was some, too bad. He's, he's trying to be the comic relief to Jake. Yeah. But Jake is already kind of the comic relief. Yeah. So he's just adding another element. It's like it's like I can see where you're coming from. It's with that. Just, he's just all he is is a sounding board for Jake in the beginning, and then they tag him along for the rest of it. And yeah. then they have this kind of like little little side story where he's trying to uh, the, the the girl from China that he's you know he he kind of starts stalking yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. And they do have a little bit of a moment at the end where he go he says that cheesy line of something I think. Uh, I think Jake let's and his missus are killing. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah and, she, and she, he goes, why don't we try that? And she goes, oh, let's go for dinner first. Yeah. And, he's like, and I think he jizzes in his pants. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I, I fought him, to be honest. I, 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 he, I, he's another one. There were so many people who just did not need to be in this film yeah. to make it work. Uh, so I think, I think he just, I think he just would have been better if, if, um, if the three, the three of them, uh, Hillard, Dylan, and the, President's daughter is it Patricia? You would, yeah, you know, Patricia. Yeah. If Patricia were just mates in the beginning, they were all fighter pilots, and then they were kind of a side story to to maybe like David's story, yeah. in my opinion. But yeah, but definitely, definitely him. He's definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. And I do agree with you though about Patricia and, and definitely She's the awful. French woman. Absolutely, awful. definitely the French woman. Next up, we have got the three best bits, and personally, my three best bits was I've got to say Floyd was quite good. Which one's Floyd? So he's the um, the scientist guy, which was with David at the start, the one with glasses, who puts his hands in the orb. And then oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it started off being really annoying, but by the end of it, I quite liked him as a character, to be fair. He quite grown on me with some of his quotes and everything yeah. he was saying. Um, the second one is going to be, no particular order of these, by the way. The second one was like CGI on the Star Wars style fights. Yeah. And the CGI overall, I thought was really, really good. And the third best bit was got to see the end credits. <laughs> the end credits. Yeah, I'd say my favourite bit is probably the end credits, but I don't know. It'd be hard to pick because uh, there's not many parts of it I actually liked. Um, I don't know, gun to my head, maybe. You've got to I pick them. I don't know. No matter how bad the film is, you've still got to pick three bits from the film. 
I like the bit when, like, near the beginning when they go to, like I say, because I think it would make a good story is like learning about um, what happened in the African yeah. with the uh, the African section with the warlord, and um, I would have liked to have seen more aboard that ship. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so on. Uh, but I, I, I like that bit, and I like the premise that you know they've been fighting them, they, f- they fought them for twenty years, and they understand them, and I think they would have made a better part of the film. They, I know they just took yeah. the warlord. Yeah, I think it would have. But well, why, why, you know? They should have had them coming and fighting. I mean, they've been fighting them for 10 years. They know them inside and out. Why yeah, weren't, got, got the why weren't they on the front them. line with them? Yeah. Where was there? They didn't see anything of it other than the militia leader. No. That followed them. Yeah, it's a good point, actually. Good point. Yeah. What the other one? Another one? Yeah. You want three? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. That one, that one was a stretch. <laughs> um, I've said the end credits, so my third one. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> you go for the end credits as well for your third one, yeah? Um, I like the CGI. I'd probably agree with you on that, but uh, there were some parts where it was let down. Like the, I think the the opening was a bit was a bit uh, pikey uh, with the with the graphics there. But you know, it's it's really hard to pick. Bit I actually really like the best bit. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, three worst bits then. Three worst bits. Um, the whole film. <laughs> the whole film. The casting directors. The casting, yeah, the writers. No, uh, the worst bit. So obviously, I've I've said about the uh, the whole the whole uh, backstory or side story yeah, about yeah. Julius. Uh, did not need to be in it. Didn't need to bring the kids to Area Fifty One. Don't know yeah. what the guy was thinking. He's an idiot. Yeah. How he even raised someone like David in the first place, I've no idea. Because I think it's just pure luck. That really pure luck, it must yeah. have been a private boarding school. It must have been. Must have been. <laughs> the mum must have been an absolute genius. He did not need to be in it. Worst bit, his whole part in it. Not yeah. the actor himself. Like the guy. He's done him dirty on the right. He's done, he's, he's, done, right he's, done, he's done him dirty. What we're going to have you do, mate, is just drive around and pick up kids. Take them to every 51. Yeah. Just so David can go, Dad, what are you doing? There was, yeah. no, there was no point to it. Yeah. Uh, so the next bit right. is, is, sorry, the, the next bit is uh, the mom. Yeah. Uh, wasted, uh, what, what's what's the actress's name? Uh, something fucked, isn't it? Uh, Vivica Ray Fox wasted her. She was. I liked her in the first film. Yeah, I don't think they should have made her. A, yeah, yeah, Dylan's yeah. mom. I don't think they should have made her a doctor, but they, they did a dis- disservice to her. They basically just had her in the film. She she brought nothing to it just to kill her off. That's the only reason they brought her in. Yeah, I think I think the idea behind it was I think he was supposed to be a motivation to Dylan, but he forgets about her. I mean, straight away, straight away, straight away, straight yeah. away yeah. I think I think the acknowledge I think he has his oh no mom no pull up I think he says like pull her up mom no when he's in circling around in the plane and then later on I think Jake mentions something to him no oh, like yeah I'm sorry in that yeah part, oh yeah. your your mum's died but I've got parents who are dead too so like fuck up pal and yeah, it's it you know so yeah I know what you're going through mate yeah but your mum just died yeah in front of you. <laughs> I know I know you just happen to be there like the whole film that's what they should have called it Independence Day happened to be there. Yeah, happened to be there. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so that 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 part, and then um, I'd say pretty much everything to do with that doctor as well, Doctor Oiken. Yeah, his name is. So he's on my number one as yeah. well. Is literally crazy scientist guy. He's probably one of the worst scenes, especially when he looks like he's going to start raping the ball. He just looks it up and down, licking his <laughs> lips. Just like, oh, my precious, can't wait to get you and stuff. And you were pretty Really, thing. really creepy. I was looked at it, I thought, check that guy's hard drive now. I get did. that done. <laughs> I did. There's a couple of hard drives I need checking in this film. But I, I'm pretty sure if no one was about, he would have just gone, you know what, guys, give me the room. <laughs> yes. yes, definitely. Oh. Definitely. I, I think that's good... why he locks himself in the cell with it. I love a good spare. <laughs> <laughs> cool. well, well, uh, the next one. Actress who played uh, Patricia. You hate her. Uh, it's, it's just awful, wasn't it? It's nothing against, like, say, in other films. I don't know what she's like been in other films. Could have been this one of her first ones that she's been in. But she's absolutely <laughs> dog poop as an actress mm. in this film. It, it just ruins it. Every single scene, she's got, like, a smouldering look. Tries to do a smouldering look. Really bad acting. Can't throw lines and dialogue out. Just completely awful. And... Yeah, it's, I agree with you as well, actually, with the scenes with the David's dad. It just didn't really need to be in there, did it? You know, the, the, ho- the, the whole, yeah, there was a, so much in there. It was a two-hour film, and, you know, they could have filled it with so much better things. Yeah, exactly. It's just, well, like, I know what you're saying about that, Patricia. She was, 
she, she was just terrible. Yeah, every it. single scene. There was, there was no again. She, there was no need for her to be in it really. Again, you know, they they don't they done her a disservice that character because she could have been great. You know, fair enough. She went into she followed her dad's footsteps. She was a pilot. She was going into she was pretty much going into politics because she was working with the new president. Yeah. Um, but then 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 basically they just made her dad's carer for half the film. He was clearly just like faking it all his yeah yeah and all then his Top stuff. Gun Maverick for the second half yeah and then <laughs> and, then, and then all of a sudden she's the best pilot out of the bunch and she's the only one that somehow survives and yeah it, it's, uh, yeah he it. just he just and finally what actor would make this film Will Smith better? exactly I was just about to say that Will, Will Smith. Smith he should have waited for him he needed I mean, it I mean if if they wanted to try and tie it in with some kind of anniversary you know. I would have waited for 30 years. I would have, you know, 25. I would have even taken 21. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, just, just ha- next time, just hang on for him, will you? Don't, yeah. don't, don't kill him off behind the scenes. You've got to ask yourself questions as well. Because, like you say, they killed him off, didn't they? They said it was a, a test flight. Yeah. What killed him off. They just kind of like, f- just threw it out there for you just so you know he was actually dead. Now, there's a few scenes that have thrown him on. But if you think about the budget, and how much the actual film grossed, right? So it's um, was it three hundred and sixty million or something like that? I said, or was it one hundred and sixty-five million? I think made? it was one hundred and sixty-five million. You said that it cost to make. Yeah, it cost to make. Um, and mm-hmm. it grossed worldwide three hundred and eighty-nine million and one hundred and three in America alone. Yeah. Now, if you had Will Smith on the title screen Top on the finger at that time of the year as well, Will Smith was in everything. It yeah. was like Schwarzenegger in the eighties. You put that name on there, people will go pay and go to see it, regardless yeah, of yeah, what the yeah. film it That's is. That's it. I mean, I went doubled. to see Suicide Squad because Will Smith was in yeah, it. And same. I regretted that. That was an awful film. That was an awful. I film. think that might be on one of our episodes as Maybe, well coming yeah. up. It's six or below. Yeah. So, have you got anything else to say? Just watch it, just so you can see how shit it is. <laughs> That's all I will advise. Go in with low expectations and you might actually enjoy it. Yeah, that's it. Don't expect that, too much. That was my mistake. Like I said at the beginning, I went in with high expectations, loving the first film. I was disappointed. Go in with low expectations and chances are you'll probably be surprised. It's, yeah. You've got nothing to do. You've got no films to watch. Give it a watch. Um, other than that, stick with the original. Forget this one was ever made. Hope they don't make a third one because yeah. God knows what they're going to do to that if they do. I'm hoping they've learned the lesson. Yeah, I think time's gone for but, that. Yeah. To be honest with you. Um, well, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I cool. can say about it. And I'm, all right. I'm just glad I'm never going to have to watch this film again, if yeah. I'm honest. So if you did enjoy it, don't forget to hit that like. Let us know down in the comment section as well yeah. your thoughts on this video. Have we been a little bit harsh? What is your rating out of 10 as well? What's your rating out of 10? I forgot to ask you. Uh, I'd probably give it a five. I'd probably go with similar to the IMDb scores. I'd probably 5.2, say, I'd say. I'd, I'd say. I'd say a five is definitely, definitely generous. Yeah. Um, but also, if you've, got any, uh, if you've got any films out there that are six or below on IMDb that you can recommend, feel free to leave a comment and we'll yeah, try and get around them. as well. Um, like it was a five-star rating on anything that you're watching as well. Yeah. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe as well. I'm going to hope to release every so often, maybe weekly, bi-weekly. But... Uh, every weekly, or at least every other week, yeah. yeah. Our next one, by the way, guys, I don't know if you know about it yet. Oh, go on. Right? It's going to be Dragon Ball Evolution. Oh. So that is our next episode. Now, if you've seen this film, you know it is terrible. On IMDb, the rating on it is 2.8. That's how terrible it is. Well, I can tell you now, I've never seen anything Dragon Ball Z, so this is going to be an experience. <laughs> Especially if it's going to be, I'm probably not going to know what's going on, but yeah, I'm sure I'll find something to uh, not like about it. All right. Stay tuned, guys. Yeah. Right, Take care, you guys. Thanks very much for watching. Take care.